Okay, we have here today another interesting integral from the UNSW integration B 2020, problem 19. We have the integral from zero to pi over two, 25 over three cos x plus four sine x, all squared dx. Okay, the first thing I notice here is just this three, four, five situation, or five squared, which makes me think of a three, four, five triangle. I don't know if this is really the best way, but what I did with this is I want to take this 25, which is 5 squared. I can bring it into the denominator, and I can write this as 1 over 5 squared because 1 over 25 in the denominator is the same thing as 25 in the numerator. Now, I think it would work to just bring the 1 fifth out front, but I think what I'm going to do is multiply it inside this because both terms are squared, so I can write this as dx over 3 fifths cosine x plus 4 fifths sine x all squared. But what I want to notice here is just the similarity between this and the angle difference formula for cosine. Okay, so using this formula that we have here for angle difference, we have like our cosine x here and here, we have our sine x here and here. And so for this to work, we're saying cosine of t is equal to 3 fifths and sine of t is equal to 4 fifths. So we can kind of capture that over here. We can write cosine t equal to 3 over 5, sine of t equal to 4 over 5, and then with that, we could put sine over cosine, and we could actually get a value for tangent. So tan of t is going to be equal to 4 over 3. And then even for cotangent of t, that's going to be just the reciprocal, or 3 over 4. Now, with any of these formulas, if we wanted to isolate t, we could easily do that. Like, we could just take tan of t, and we could write t as, like, arctan of 4 thirds. But since I don't really know what that calculates to, and it's kind of, like, clunky to write it, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite the integral, leave it in t, and then at the end we can come back and substitute back for t. Okay, so doing that, we'll just rewrite this. We're integrating from 0 to pi over 2, and then this denominator is just going to become cosine squared of this thing, which is just x minus t. But for 1 over cosine squared x minus t, I can actually write this as secant squared x minus t. And then before we integrate, you could do a substitution, but it's really not necessary because the integral of x minus t is just going to be dx and the substitution is not really going to help us. So I'm just going to go ahead and integrate this. And it's going to become the integral of secant squared is just tangent x minus t. And we just need to evaluate from 0 to pi over 2. So we'll just come down here and evaluate this thing. So plugging in pi over 2, we have tan pi over 2 minus t. And then for the second term, we plug in a 0, we end up with tan of minus t. But tangent's an odd function, so what I can do is take the minus out front, turn this into a plus, turn this back into a plus. And then we also have a value for this because we can use the complementary angle formula. The complementary angle formula tells us that for tan pi over 2 minus t, this is just going to be cotangent of t plus tangent of t. But we already found our values of cotangent of t and tangent of t earlier on when we were messing with this formula. So all we need to do is plug in, and this is just going to be 3 over 4 plus 4 over 3. We can get a common denominator and write this as 9 12 plus 16 over 12, or just 25 over 12. Okay, I thought this was a really good one from UNSW 2020. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.